Taylor, it's the first time we've had you on since the announcement that the Bundesliga will return. How does this affect MLS going forward and the fact that how much can they use that as a template to try and get things going again? To be honest with you, Dan, I, I think it's more of a political question uh, to not dodge the question. But the truth of the matter is we don't know what testing is in the United States. So as much as Major League Soccer, the NBA, Major League Baseball, and even the NHL in America want to look at what Germany's doing, it's apples to oranges with how each country has dealt with this coronavirus. So I, I think they want to look at it and see if they can pull it off. But this doesn't work in the United States if testing isn't readily available. And that's the number one issue that I hear from NBA people, that I hear from Major League Baseball, and that I hear from Major League Soccer. So, yeah, naturally, all of us are interested to see what it is. But we saw what UFC 249 did over the past weekend, and it did massive numbers because everyone's dying for it. But that's an individual mm. sport. Those are small numbers of people that you can control. This is a little different. I think MLS has their eyes on it, but they're more worried about getting tests readily available for their players and their organization. So come July 1st, August 1st, they're ready to rock. This is the thing, isn't it, Ali? I suppose their hands are somewhat tied going forward. They are because... It's a moving target what we're dealing with. You don't have a, a date that you can actually say, you know what, this is when, when we're going to get going. You have what you hope you, you potentially are going to be dates in which you think, okay, this is maybe when, when we can roll out a new plan, when we can roll out a, a new strategy. But in order to do that, you, you have to have certainty. And what we've learned from this pandemic is that nothing is certain. Everything is a moving target. And as it pertains to the Bundesliga, I think what all of us that are involved with the game in this country with Major League Soccer and anywhere else in the world, you're looking at Bundesliga and hoping against all hope that everything goes well, simply for the perception that that gives everybody else outside of the Bundesliga and say, hold on a second, if they're doing it right and there's a template and there's a plan to follow and it's working well, then okay, maybe that's something that we can follow. Maybe that works for us as well and that may be oversimplifying but in i think it you need more positive out of this than negatives because what could also happen is that if it doesn't work in the bundesliga then everybody says uh oh maybe we ought to take two or three steps back and maybe we ought to reconsider whether we can do this at all and so i think leagues around the world major league soccer included you're just hoping that whatever is going on at the Bundesliga is done correctly and that it does give a pathway in, by which everybody else can say there is a way to get back out on the field and to do it correctly. And if the Bundesliga shows us that way, that's useful for everybody. Dan, to so Alejandro's right, said, point, when, when you, Dan, when you look at Alejandro, what he's trying to say, and he's, he's right on this, this is where this has gone uh, – this hasn't been properly talked about. The Bundesliga has tested over 1,700 athletes and staff members, and they've had how many positive results? You can't take Dresden in that because that's the second Bundesliga. They've had 10 positive results. I'd argue that what the German officials are doing, each state and the Bundesliga, they are a prime example that if you give the leagues the test, you give society the test, you can properly assess the situation. I'd argue that's worked. I think that I think the way the Bundesliga has gone after this, it's worked because you're taking these athletes and staff members that, by the way, are asymptomatic. Yes, they've tested positive. You take them away from the team, and then you can prog progress. It's no different than what UFC did. I just think at times, everything is, is always the negative aspect. I understand that. Hmm. But what Germany's done and the Bundesliga has done, I'd argue, is actually fairly positive. Well, certainly, given the protocol they have around positive testing, because that was the big talking point with the return of action, well, what happens if someone tests positive? Well, the Germans said, right, okay, what we're going to do is make themselves isolate, but we will continue things as long as we continue to test. And as you say, that seems to have worked. This part of a fluid situation, that it's going to continue. But just looking at the conversation you had with Don Garber last month, T, are we in a situation where we'd be like, right, okay, if we can't get things back by August the 1st, we're going to have a big old tournament, really build it up, and really sell this league. Yeah, I'm okay with it. Uh, you, you, Dan, you, you know me. I, I, I want something rather than nothing, right? So 
instead of just letting the entire calendar year pass. If you can pull off something that's creative, uh, that has some kind of carrot at the end, whether it's a con- the winner gets a CONCACAF Champions League spot, whatever it may be, because the Open Cup is going to be postponed. There's a lot that's going to be fluid within what that's worth, but you've got to entice the players. The only question is this. You're asking the players, if this happens, to go 8, 10 weeks without seeing their family. I think you've got to be a little bit more progressive and how you look at this and maybe it is multiple cities and and two or three cities and you fly in and out but for me the tournament kicks off you bring the fans back in you raise some awareness the the games within the tournament I think need to count towards the league standings and then you go where it may but you've got to be you've got to address and and I'd say embrace is the better word the novelty of this all. It's a pandemic. It's once in a blue moon. It's once in a lifetime type of situation. You've got to be open-minded. You've got to do something. I want something rather than nothing. And if it's a tournament in Orlando, Dallas, Kansas City, whatever the city may be, I'm all for it. Eight to 10 weeks, Mrs. Moreno will be already packing your bags, Ali, if you were still playing. How would you (laughs) feel about getting back into, into action given the current climate? Well, if you are a player that have been sitting at home for the last couple of months, you're itching to play. This is what you do. It's what's in your blood. You, you want to compete. You want to you be out on the field. And, and I think this is when balancing that family life and loved ones and then your career and your individual ambitions, this is when it kind of it, it collides in a way in which is, it's going to be difficult to handle. However, I and maybe I'm influenced by the fact that I've been watching The Last Dance and Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls and what true competition is and what a true competitor looks like. I, I think that these players, if you're a true competitor, if they put the games out in your backyard, you want to win. If they put it out in the parking lot, you want to win. If they put it in just in, in a high school, you want to go and win it. Wherever it is that you go and play these games, you want to win. And you're itching to play because you haven't been playing for the last couple of months. You haven't been doing what you were born to do and what you you worked your whole entire life to do. And so I, I think we have to be flexible, as Taylor just mentioned world nowadays and a completely different world than what we were uh, three months ago and so if indeed we understand that we don't have to rush to judgment and we don't have to say you know what this tournament is nothing more than a glorified preseason uh, please take a step back and understand where we are and understand what has happened and understand the reality and the current circumstances of the world and so give the players the benefit of the doubt that they're going to be so anxious to get back out on the field that maybe they will bring an intensity to those games that may- maybe you were not expected. And maybe your level of expectation out there uh, should accommodate for the fact that indeed the world has changed. And so if it is a tournament and if indeed is how they're talking about a month, 45 days of teams playing back and forth and it's intense and it's competitive and it means something and the players put out performances then I think we can all win from that. But we all have to be mindful, and I think this has to be and continues to be priority number one, the health and safety of not only the players, not only the staff for the team, but everybody else that is around putting a game together. One of the things that I learned uh, that was most surprising to me when I retired and, and started doing television and doing the things behind the scenes is how much and how many people are involved in putting a game together. And all those people will be working to put this tournament together as well. And so if you cannot ensure their health and their safety, then we have a problem. But if you can, and that's priority number one, then sure, go ahead and play and let these players be out on the field and display all their skill level. Meanwhile, on Wednesday, ESPN2 have a special triple header. Uh, looking back at some of the classic matches during rivalry week. Oh, I said it. Wow. And that is really difficult <laughs> to say, by the way. Try that at home. Uh, <laughs> Taylor, you've been uh, all of these games pretty much. Which for you is, is the most intense, the most memorable? We've got some interesting ones. I think the triple header is interesting in the sense that Joseph Martinez scores his record-breaking goal against Orlando. 
I'm not going to pick that because Orlando still hasn't made that a real rivalry because they can't compete with Atlanta from day one. Uh, you look at New York City hosting the New York Red Bulls. Great rivalry, yet the games at Yankee Stadium makes for an awkward competition. So naturally, you have to go with the Portland Timbers hosting the Seattle Sounders. And this game that we're going to show is a good one in the sense that it's got everything. It's got red cards, Brad Evans in the 44th minute. It's got Clint Dempsey saving a point for the Seattle Sounders coming off the bench. So th th that game has everything. And if there's one of those that I'm going to watch, it's Portland uh, hosting the Seattle Sounders. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.